Well, joining us now for more on what we can expect tomorrow night is former Trump White House Cabinet Secretary William McGinley. Uh, William, thank you so much for weighing in. Thank you for having me. Well, it's wonderful to have you. So we have seen these candidates on stage before. We've heard their messages to voters. I think the big question here is what needs to happen before a clear Trump alternative is decided? What do the candidates need to do to put themselves in that position? I think your, your prior segment laid it out well. What they need to do is they need to talk and have an honest assessment of where the United States is, both domestically and in terms of foreign policy. But what is their path forward? What is their plan to actually correct the domestic issues that are crippling the American family's budget? Everything from inflation um, to supply shortages, et cetera, but also on foreign policy. Uh, Ukraine, Israel, and the, the looming China threat in the Pacific um, are going to be issues that I think Republican primary voters are going to be keen to listen to. And they really need to separate themselves from the pack uh, to try and make themselves the clear alternative to President Trump, who right now has a commanding lead in all the polls that we're seeing. And I wanted to dig in a little deeper on those numbers. They are pretty staggering. Um, he's not showing up, the former president, but he is leading by nearly 60 percent when you look at a majority of estimates. Uh, there's a general consensus that when you're ahead by that much, all you can do is damage your standing at a debate. I'm curious, what do you make of his strategy to continue to sit these out? Look, I think right now the uh, the Republican primary voters really do favor President Trump because they remember how good the economy was during his first term. Um, he didn't get us into any new wars. Um, he actually had the Abraham Accords and brought the Middle East closer uh, to a peace agreement than any other time in the modern era. And I think, you know, voter Republican primary voters are longing for that type um, of domestic and foreign policy agenda. Um, you know, uh, obviously, there's a lot of Republicans who didn't like the tweets and, and some of the statements um, that he made. But at the end of the day, people, I think, in 2024 for the presidency are going to be voting their pocketbook. They're going to be wondering if their neighborhoods are safe. If they're a small business owners, do they have access to credit? Um, or are the interest rates going to continue to cripple their ability to get the capital they need to expand their operations and create new jobs? So these are very substantive issues that the American people are dealing with, and they're all looking forward uh, to hearing the candidates' plans to get this country back on the right track. So Doug Burgum, as you know, he dropped out of the race this week. A big question on many minds is how soon before we see more candidates drop out of this race. Uh, when do you expect that may happen when this field uh, narrows? What are your predictions? Look, I think in terms of the four candidates who actually qualified for the debate stage today, I don't think you're really going to see any narrowing of that field um, until after New Hampshire. Um, Vivek Ramaswamy and uh, Ron DeSantis have really staked quite a bit on Iowa. Um, Chris Christie is is really keen um, on trying to do well in New Hampshire, as is Nikki Haley. Uh, Nikki Haley actually is getting a, a bit of a bump in Iowa as well. And as the former governor of South Carolina, um, she will stay in through that primary is, my, uh, is what I anticipate. And so I think this is going to go through. Super Tuesday could be the uh, consequential uh, a contest that really does narrow the field. But, but I think after those first three is when you're really going to start to see it narrow. All right. Interesting. William, thank you again for joining us. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.